Okay, so question number four. Thiophene is a liquid com compound of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur. Sample of thi thiophene weighing 7.96 milligrams was burned in oxygen, giving 16.65 milligrams of carbon dioxide. Another sample was subjected to a series of reactions that transformed all the sulfur in the compound to barium sulfate. If 4.31 milligrams of thiophene gave 11.96 milligrams of barium sulfate, what is the empirical formula of thiophene? Also, its molecular weight is 84 atomic mass units. What is its molecular formula? Okay, so this question is actually a good question. It uh, is multi-stepped, but let's go over all the steps uh, one by one. Okay, so the first part of the solution is to find the mass of carbon. So the question says that when a sample of thiophene weighed 7.96 milligrams, it gave 16.65 milligrams of carbon dioxide. So first we need to find the mass percentage of carbon that is in carbon dioxide. So mass percent of carbon and to do that, we are going to take the molar mass of carbon divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide. And if we multiply this by 100%, this will give us the mass of carbon in carbon dioxide. So the molar mass of carbon you can find on the periodic table is 12.1 grams per mole, and the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 12.01 plus 2 times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 32. Okay, so multiplying this by 100. The mass percentage of carbon in carbon dioxide is 27.29%. Okay, so now that we know how much carbon is in carbon dioxide, then, and we also know that the sample of thiophene gave off 16.65 milligrams of carbon dioxide. If I multiply this by however much of it was carbon, so the 27.29%, then we can find the mass of carbon in the sample. So 16.65 milligrams of carbon dioxide multiplied by 0 0.2729, so this is the percentage in decimal form, gives us 4.54 milligrams of carbon. And to specify, this was in 7.96 milligrams of thiophene. Okay, so we have the mass of carbon. Now for part two of the question. We want to find the mass of sulfur now. OK, 
Okay, so to do this, we're going to do something similar. We want to find the mass percent of sulfur in barium sulfate. So the mass percent of sulfur is equal to the molar mass of sulfur divided by the molar mass of barium sulfate. So the molar mass of sulfur is 32 grams per mole. And the molar mass, the total molar mass of barium sulfate is 233.38 grams per mole. Okay, so now we want to Take the fraction, multiply it by 100, and you should get 13.71%. Okay, so the question says, if 4.31 milligrams of thiophene gave 11.96 milligrams barium sulfate, so I'll show that 11.96 milligrams of barium sulfate has the 13.71% of sulfur. So I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.1371. And you should get 1.64 milligrams of sulfur, but this is only in the 4.31 milligram sample of thiophene. And I want to express this in the same mass of thiophene as my carbon. So to find that, we need to do an additional step, just um, showing the ratio of so the masses we can find uh, the sulfur in 7.96 milligrams of thiophene. So we know that 1.64 milligrams of sulfur is in the 4.31 milligram sample. And we are looking for how much sulfur is in 7.96 milligrams of thiophene. I'm going to say total instead of thiophene. So now we pretty much just have to solve for x. And you get 3.03 milligrams of sulfur, and this is in 7.96 milligrams of thiophene. So let me box this mass as well. Okay, so step three. Uh, we know that thiophene only contains carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur, so now we just need to find the mass of hydrogen in the sample. So the mass of hydrogen is equal to the total mass, which is 7.96 milligrams. Subtract the mass of carbon, which was 4.54 milligrams, and then we're going to subtract the mass of the sulfur, and we end up with 0 0.39 milligrams of hydrogen. Okay, so we have the masses of all three components of thiophene 
Uh, but the question doesn't end there. We need to then find the number of moles of each of these atoms. So I'm going to do this on the next page. So question four continued. And step four is to find the number of moles So let's do carbon first. The mass of carbon was 4.54 milligrams. But when I want to calculate for number of moles, uh, I'm going to convert my milligrams to grams. So to do that, we just divide by 1,000 or multiply by 10 to the negative 3. So this is the value in grams. And the equation for number of moles is mass over molar mass. So the molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. So the number of moles in the sample is 3.78 times 10 to the negative 4. And this is for the moles of carbon. Now let's do the same thing for the sulfur. Its mass was 3.03 milligrams, but to convert to grams, I'm going to multiply by 10 to the negative 3. And the molar mass of sulfur is 32. So if we divide mass over molar mass, you get 9.47 times 10 to the negative 5, and this is moles of sulfur. And now for the number of moles of hydrogen, it had 0 0.39 milligrams. So again, I'm going to convert it to grams, and then divide by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. So now this gives 3.86 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of hydrogen. So now step 5 is to find the empirical formula. And to do that, I'm going to write down all the atoms and then divide by the lowest number of moles. So this number of moles for sulfur is the lowest out of the three. So for carbon, it is 3.78 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 9.47 times 10 to the negative 5. And for hydrogen, it is 3.86 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 9.47 times 10 to the negative 5. And then for sulfur, it's just dividing its moles by itself. So that always gives just 1, but I'll show the work. And then when we do the division step, we want to round to the nearest whole number. So when we do this, we get C4, H4, S. So now for step six, we can find the molecular formula. So to do this, uh, we first want to find the total mass of our empirical formula. So it was 4 times the molar mass of carbon 
plus 4 times the molar mass of hydrogen plus the molar mass of sulfur. So I can try to fit it going across 4 times 12.01 plus 4 times 1.01 1 .01 plus 32 and you'll notice that the molar mass of the empirical formula is also equal to 84 atomic mass units. So this tells us that our molecular formula is the same as our empirical formula, which is C4H4S. Okay, so pretty long question, but we made it through. Let's see what the junior tutor said, and I'll go back to the first step. Uh, step one, calculate the mass of carbon in 7.96 thiophene. So the mass of carbon in thiophene is equal with the mass of carbon in carbon dioxide based on the law of conservation of mass. The percentage of carbon in carbon dioxide is 27.29%. So to this percentage of 16.65 milligrams of CO2 is 4.54 milligrams of carbon. Step two, calculate the mass of sulfur in 7.96 milligrams thiophene. So the mass of sulfur in barium sulfate is equal with the mass of sulfur in 4.31 milligrams thiophene based on the law of conservation of mass. So I think they meant to put sulfur instead of barium for this mass percent. But anyways, they still did the correct math and got 13.71% sulfur. So that means 1.64 milligrams of sulfur is in the 11.96 milligrams of barium sulfate and also in 4.31 milligrams of thiophene. But to find the mass of sulfur in 7.96 milligrams of thiophene, they showed how the ratios compared with the 4.31 milligrams and they found that 3.03 milligrams of sulfur was in 7.96 thiophene. Now to find the mass of hydrogen, uh, I think it's just missing the subtract sign, but nevertheless they still got 0 0.39 grams of hydrogen, and now they calculated the empirical formula. So they found the number of moles of each of the different elements. Okay, and they got the same values. And then they found the smallest ratio. So the lowest number of moles was the sulfur. And then they divided everything by that. And they found the empirical formula to be C4H4S. And they noticed that this was the same formula as the molecular because they had uh, identical molecular masses. Okay, so this solution is correct. Thank you.